Hello, welcome to the first episode of whatever this is. I got mentioned in uh, Victorian Parliament the other day and I want to talk about what that was about. So the Parliament of Victoria met to discuss the Estate Agents Residential Tenancies and Other Acts Amendment Funding Bill 2024. Um, this bill is really just to provide, allow for the government to provide funding for what they're um, making, which is a, an alternative to VCAT, like a dispute resolution um, kind of method, which VCAT already is, they're just making another one. It's kind of weird, but it's not really the point of this discussion. What happens is usually they present a bill and then a bunch of these politicians get to chat about what they reckon and kind of have digs at each other and stuff like that. It's really fun. It's, it's really, really fun. Anyways, Nathan Lambert starts talking about it. And during this, um, he says, I do want to say there is a narrative in some circles that this government does not support renters' rights and sometimes that we were we are allegedly in the pockets of billionaire landlords. This is clearly not true. Which is funny um, because I disagree with that and I want to kind of explain why. So in Victoria, the minister that regulates landlord and real estate agent behaviour is the Consumer Affairs Minister. This minister is currently Gabrielle Williams. However, before her, it was this guy called Danny Pearson. Danny Pearson owns six properties. He is very much a landlord through and through. And he was the minister responsible for regulating landlords and what they can and can't do. I think that's a conflict of interest, but that's my opinion. And in fact, it's also the truth. When Nathan Lambert said that there's a narrative that's going around that's not true, that the Labor government in Victoria is in the pockets of billionaire landlords, uh, he is wrong. They're just in their own pockets because they're all landlords. Danny Pearson owns millions of dollars in property and he is the one responsible, well, he was the one rather, responsible for regulating what landlords can and can't do. That's wrong. The current Consumer Affairs Minister hasn't recorded any kind of investment properties on her register of interest, which probably means that she is not a landlord, which is definitely a step in the right direction. However, The Age did an article on exactly how many properties each of these politicians have, and the Labor politicians, on average, have an investment property. They are landlords. They're a government of landlords regulating what landlords can and can't do. Also, I do want to talk about something that I found really funny. Um, the Liberal Party in Victoria, which is a bit of a joke, um, announced last year that they were going to introduce uh, like a minister for the cost of living, a shadow minister, because they're in opposition. But they're like, this guy is going to represent us and your interests over the cost of living and the rising cost of living. Uh, and his name is... David Southwick. Guess how many properties David Southwick owns? 17. This guy is a real champion for cost of living. He must know exactly what it's like to be experiencing cost of living pressures when he owns tens of millions of dollars in property. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about when um, they talked about me because uh, obviously I'm just obsessed with myself. So Nathan Lambert kind of goes on about like how much they've done in the renting space and he says, very importantly, we've now introduced strong minimum standards with respect to a whole range of matters, locks, mold, electrical safety, lighting, heating, and minimum appliances. It's funny because the electrical safety bit actually doesn't form part of the minimum standards. That's a thing I am also very angry about, um, whatever. And he says, I know now if you get into your rental property and the oven does not work, you can say your rental provider that they must fix a problem. I know there's an ongoing debate. I know the minister is very open to further things we can do in that area. I did have an exchange the other day with Purple Pingers about this issue. That's me. I'm not sure how Hansard will record Purple Pingers, but he is an online personality, which is quite funny. Um, Hansard is like the record of everything that they say in parliament. Um, also, no one really says pingers in Parliament, so that's quite funny. Anyways, now it's in there twice just that day. He continued to say, it is true that under the current laws, we are very concerned with renters' rights, and as such, it is not possible to rent out a property that does not meet the minimum standard, but it is, strictly speaking, possible to advertise that property because at the point where you are advertising it, if it is empty, you do not have a renter and you do not have a lease. What he's saying is, this is something I raised with um, the Executive Director of Consumer Affairs Victoria, which is, it's not currently illegal to advertise a property that doesn't meet the minimum rental standards in Victoria. It's illegal to actually rent it out, but if you put it online for lease, 
that's perfectly legal. Um, I think that's wrong. Nathan disagrees. Nathan says, I'm not sure that this is a highly consequential loophole in the long run. He doesn't reckon it's important. Because evidently you cannot sign the lease. But I know it is the kind of thing that the minister is still very attuned to. She is of course very attuned to the degree to which those minimum standards could be retrospective. And I know she's attuned generally to the fact that in the community there are certainly areas which we can further consider rental reform. I want to say to Mr. Lambert, he represents the electorate of Pres Preston. I've covered quite a few properties in Preston that are terrible. What he doesn't get particularly is that there is a housing crisis at the moment and people are renting out properties that they know don't meet the minimum rental standards because they're desperate and they don't have anywhere else to go. He says, well, this loophole is inconsequential because they can advertise it, but then you can just, you know, um, it's illegal to actually rent it out. He doesn't get that there is such an incredible power imbalance in which renters are required to take their landlords and their real estate agents to court. That's not going to work in an area like Victoria where we have just, you know, no grounds evictions, where you can just get evicted for no reason. Landlords will evict you if they don't like you. That happens in Victoria, happens all the time. If they fix this loophole, that would protect vulnerable people in Victoria from renting out properties that don't meet the minimum rental standards because it wouldn't allow them to be advertised. It's pretty simple, like it's illegal to advertise a caravan park spot or a rooming house spot that doesn't meet the, the minimum standards, but for some reason, not a rental. He also did mention that when he goes door knocking in press and there's still people concerned about the amount of information that's collected when you apply for rental properties. And I'm glad they're looking at that because that's really important. Anyways, let's jump back to what he said near the start um, when he's talking about that, you know, the Labor government is in the pockets of billionaire landlords, which they are. He says, I almost must say, I feel that critique leaves out the role of real estate agents in some of the challenges we face. And I think some, some of the poor behavior we see originates not from landlords, but from them, real estate agents. He's absolutely correct. Like all landlords are bastards. However, also all real estate agents are bastards. They're doing dodgy things every day so are landlords. Why don't you just sort both of them out? It'd be great. Anyways, there's a lot of stuff being discussed in here and it's really interesting. And I just wanted to do a video on kind of responding to him because um, I feel like he's kind of misrepresenting what's going on, but not exactly. And I'm glad he's talking about these things. I'd love to have a chat with him. Obviously I'm just some idiot on the internet though. So, um, I respect if he would not like to talk to me. Um, this is the first one of these that I'm gonna be doing, not just on renting and housing and stuff, but um, this is all thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Um, these will be released on Patreon first, so all the Patreon, patron, patrons, patrons can uh, listen to it first and watch it and stuff, and then I'll post it publicly. But yeah, um, thank you all for your support. Um, if you wanna support me, please feel free to join the Patreon or like grab some merch and stuff. Uh, if you don't wanna do that, don't do that because um, everything sucks now. Anyways, love you all. Also, just a moment of appreciation for my least favorite character on MAFS, uh, Jack, and his mustache that looks like a furry caterpillar that is getting thinner and thinner and falling, slipping further and further down onto his veneers. That's all.